In the arrests that followed, the police found that the culprits had a number of things in common. They were young, 16 to 22, 23. They were lonely people. Many of them told us that before they were burning churches, they have been listening over hours and hours and hours of black metal music. Holman Cullen Chapel was rebuilt at huge cost. But other historic churches had been lost for good. But of course the kids loved it. This uh, means kill uh, Christianity. It had been uh, much trouble with these T-shirts. <laughs> you didn't know it? Yeah. People don't like that kind of stuff, you know, Norwegian people. I think that is uh, a reason for the black metal scene are very big in Norway because of that story with killings and all the black metal dudes, church firing and everything like that, so. Black metal has now spread across the world. Bands like Satyricon and Cradle of Filth can sell hundreds of thousands of albums. Some people say black metal is Norway's largest cultural export. And the band who started the whole thing aren't complaining. People we scared are scared. And the people who understood the joke are still there. I'm just smiling about the whole thing. It's not a it's not totally a joke. It's of all of course it's uh, something that the government couldn't control, then we are enemies of the state, they try to keep us down. And by doing that, what happened? Cult fucking legends, you know. Mayhem are now playing to a new generation of fans who've grown up on the legend. The band see no problem with the violence of their music. In fact, they think it serves a social purpose. We are like a... What do you call that? When you take the air out of the balloon, of the, the thing that's holding back all the air, the ventil, what's the English word for that? Well, I think we are some sort of a wild for a lot of people, and they like it. You know, they, they, they like to be on the edge. They like on the edge music. Like many young metal fans, Adrian plays in his own band. He's the lead singer and writes some of the lyrics. Um, we called Tearing Carnage. Uh, it's death metal, you know, like cutting people and all stuff like that. But it's uh, black death metal. When I read those things, I think thought it was terrible, and it is terrible. What he's writing is the pictures that he draws is terrible, but it is so far from reality, very far from reality. You don't take this seriously? No, no, it's all fantasy. I don't know, it's just it's just like a movie. It's uh, like living in a fantasy. That assures me that he's not going to be like that. It's not easy to become like that. <laughs> in Italy, the Beasts of Satan case has become one of the most sensational trials in recent times. Seven years after his son's death, Michele Tollis is coming to the end of his search for justice. Many of the suspicions he harbored while his son was missing have been proved right. The people with Fabio on the night he died had been the boys from his death metal band, Ferocity. Nicola Sapone, 
Andrea Volpe, and his boyhood friend, Mario Maccione. The plan that evening was to go and carry out another of our usual tests of courage, but intended metaphorically, like something which involved a sacrifice to the devil. You had to risk your life. We drank a bit, we smoked a bit, then left the midnight. On the journey, we listened to Dayside, I think. When we reached the village where the woods are, in Soma Lombardo, these drugs confuse you. They distort your memory. I have absolutely no memory of how things went. Mario Maccione has changed his story of what happened that night several times. From other testimony and evidence, police believe they have pieced together what really happened. Nicola Sapone held Chiara Marino from behind, stabbing her in the stomach. At the same time, Volpi began stabbing Fabio Tollis. And Mario Maccione hit him with a hammer on the top of his skull. The two kids were then thrown into the hole. I remember I got up from the ground as though I'd fallen, covered in blood. I had the hammer there near me. It seems that Nicola Sapone then got into the hole and slit their throats. And because they were still moaning, he stuffed some chestnut husks in their mouths. Then they filled in the hole and urinated on the grave. I still didn't believe it had all happened. Mario Maccione is serving 19 years for the murders of Fabio and Chiara. Andrea Volpe received a 30-year sentence. I don't have any feelings of revenge, bitterness or hatred. My greatest satisfaction, although I say that in inverted commas, because nothing will bring Fabio back to us. Nothing can take us back eight years. My satisfaction lies in knowing that we've stopped them. Stopped them. In January 2006, five more members of the sect were convicted of murder and given long prison sentences. And the motives behind the crimes have finally emerged. Chiara was murdered as a ritual sacrifice to the devil. Fabio had to die for the simple reason that he had become skeptical and had begun to mock the other members of the group for their satanic beliefs. But the murders were not the only crimes to be linked to the beasts of Satan. Andrea Bontade was a drummer in another metal band. After he failed to turn up on the night of Fabio's murder, Volpe and others used psychological terror to pressure him into committing suicide. The story was really shocking, so to say. But this was only the first story. There was one uh, who died in another crash, another car crash, very strange. There was another one who was found in the forest. Lombardo committed suicide in the cemetery of Legnano by setting himself on fire. Also without any obvious plausible reason. All in all, we found something like seven young people. And we are talking of a small town. Seven young people, 20 years, 25 years old. All of them linked by one thing, that all of them uh, spent some months or some weeks with these people. 
The Beasts of Satan case has generated feverish speculation in Italy. Not least about how much influence the heavy metal music may have had on the crimes. You can count on the fingers of one hand the people who've done what we've done. Of the millions of people who listen to metal, no one, I repeat, no one has ever been involved in anything like this. In fact, many more people have done things like this who've not listened to metal at all. No one can contradict me when I say that heavy metal and Satanism are closely linked. They go hand in hand, they're inseparable.